I have with me today one of the men regarded as the best quiz in the country over a period of years in the United Kingdom. It's Kevin Ashman. Kevin, your role of honour includes mastermind, brain of Britain, mastermind champion of champions. No, no. But, um, there are follow-on titles from Brain of Britain, which are Brain of Brains and Top Brain. And there was also a special 15 to 1 champions effort as well. But uh, no, the mastermind never actually did a... A champion of champions. Well, they did in 1982, but that was the only one they ever did, mm. few years before my time. So you can't boast about that when no, you're no, captaining no. the Eggheads team. No, no. Uh, how has your quiz life changed since Eggheads? The profile has been yeah. raised tremendously. Yeah, it has, as a, because Eggheads is on every day, Monday to Friday, and it's, off, and it's now reached the point where we're doing a lot, and so it's on for a good chunk of the year. So it does, in terms of public recognition, yes, it really has raised the profile. It's got a fan club yet. Uh, well, Apart from me, of course. <laughs> as far as I know, there's no official fan club. But, um, no, there's a lot, of, a lot of people watch it. The you know, racing is very good, and um, you know, I do find a lot of people stopping me and wanting to talk about it and all this sort of thing. When did you first get wind of eggheads? How did you know you were going to be on it? Oh, they, they asked me. They came after me. They, they were trying to put a team together, and obviously my name had been mentioned at some point, and so they, um, they asked if I would be interested in doing it. And as it happens, I was available, so I thought I'd give it a try. A lot of students of quiz have bemoaned the fact that you're actually not doing Brain of Britain anymore mm. as, as a question setter. Yeah. Uh, with Eggheads, I mean, would you miss Brain of Britain? You, you were maybe, was it a little bit more demanding for Brain of Britain as a question setter rather than a question answerer? They're two different disciplines altogether, I think, really, setting and answering. Um, when you're setting questions, what you're trying to do is come up with the best balanced set that you can in order to, to make a good contest. So, at least not consciously anyway, I'm not taking in the information when I'm writing questions because I'm thinking about other aspects of what I'm doing. Um, question answering is obviously a much more speed-oriented um, activity and uh, that is something you really have to focus on if you're going to be successful. It must be nice after so many years participating at the highest level in national quizzing to actually be a, a full-time professional quizzer and personally I think there should be more. Do you think there's scope for professional quizzing ever in this country with, through the promotion of programmes like for instance Q12 or maybe having repeat appearances on other quiz shows? I, I get very frustrated that the very people who prove themselves most adept at for instance Mastermind mm -hmm. don't get invited back again. Yeah. No, I mean, there's scope there certainly. Um, I think uh, broadcast, well the broadcast media generally are probably missing a little bit of a trick in in terms of the, the sheer quality that there is of, of people on a regular basis for, for playing. Well, I'm absolutely positive that they are, because I, I recall the day 15 to 1 coming in, turning the television on when you got in from mm. work or school, and mm. you're watching half an hour of people yeah. being, answering questions, and quite jaw-dropping at times. Uh, what, if you could only retain one of your titles or one aspect of your quiz life, would you, for instance, keep the Egghead's captaincy with the money or would you actually take something else? What would you keep? To retain one of the titles. If you only had that, that, one. That would be, I mean, that would be a difficult toss-up as between Mastermind and Brain of Britain, I think, because in their different spheres of TV and radio, I think they're equatable. So, um, I think on balance, I would, I would have to say, because of my association with the show and all that, uh, Probably Brain of Britain, okay. it, and partly as well because that's purely a general knowledge show, whereas Mastermind, of course, you have the specialist subjects as well. Could you perhaps describe any revision regimes that you've actually gone through in your life? Do you do it now or have you done it in the past? I'm sure people look at you and would wish to try to emulate some of your success, mm -hmm. and myself included, I'd love to be better at quiz, but what have you done in your life to make yourself better at quiz? I don't do it as much as I used to, um, I've got a lot lazier than I used to be, as simple as that. But um, no, I mean, in the days when I was doing things like Mastermind, Brain of Britain, all of those, 15 to 1 and others, I did try to, um, to have a regime of, of learning, I mean, especially about those subjects I wasn't already really fairly comfortable with. I've always, since long before I became involved in quizzing, I've always been interested in things like history, films and so forth. Other things like, for instance, pop music and so forth, I've had to, to bone up a bit on over the years. And um, I, I'm not the sort of person who can actually read alphabetical encyclopedias or anything like that. I, if I'm going to read something, I need to have background context 
I need to even stuff that won't necessarily come up is never likely to be asked. But as long as I've got something, a framework to fit information in, so I'd read up about a particular subject. When, at what stage, did you realise that you had something? Um, I think I'd always watched things like Mastermind, University Challenge and so forth since I was a kid. Never actually really been actively involved in quizzing until I joined the civil service and in the London region of the Nothing civil service. Nothing else to do, so eh? <laughs> you know, I didn't start drinking until I joined the civil service. Either. But um, they, they, had, they had a good level competition in the, in the London region and nationally as well, but the London region was the, the one that I was involved in and that gave me taste for the actual competitive part myself and then enough people said to me why don't you go in for something like Mastermind and eventually I decided to, to do that and it all took off from there, discovered it was something I could do. You play uh, in the QLL regularly, the Quiz League of London, you must be looking over your shoulder now a little bit. Oh absolutely, I mean there's, um, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very good level league there and um, there's a team, yeah, it's called Broken Hearts now, yes, they've, they've got seven or eight so even if there's somebody missing they can bring somebody else in. It's quite frightening. Perhaps what we've missed out on on television is seeing you on uh, some of the big money programmes, mm. uh, the People's Quiz, Who mm. Wants to Be a Millionaire. Mm. Does your current position preclude you from playing in any of those things? Yes, yeah, basically, yes. That is such a shame. You did yeah. compete in Millionaire Life. Yeah, the road show. You yeah, got on the, the last road. person to get on before the final, yeah, 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 and um, managed to, you know, to, to prove to my own satisfaction anyway that I could do it. I mean, it was never... It was never open to me from the first instance. Well, by, that, by the time the show came along, I'd already won Mastermind, Brain of Britain, all of that, and I don't think there was ever any realistic chance that I was getting on there. So, um, and that's been the same really throughout my quiz career with a lot of the money quizzes. That they're, I mean, they're not really looking for the, generally speaking, anyway, for um, the, the sort of players who are going to win the likes of Mastermind and, and Brain of Britain and so forth. Thank you, Salador. <laughs> So, um, no, so I mean, it's, it's just one of those things. It, they, they all, that side of quizzing really came along a bit too late for me, in that sense. Oh, well, you're doing all right at the moment. Have you any ambitions remaining regarding quiz or not travel, perhaps? Not especially, no. I mean, obviously, the, the international scene has taken off a bit in recent years, and that's a very interesting development because other countries come at it from a, a different angle and have different ways of, um, of doing things. But um, it, um, ambitions, no, not really, not in that sense. I mean, I see, I see the future more as being on the writing side than the, the playing side. But as long as the playing side is still active with the likes of Eggheads and, and this competition and others, then that's, that's fine, I'll carry on doing it. Well, if it's anything to you, I suppose my ambition, once you have a, yeah. quite overtly actually, yeah. is to see the profile of quiz yeah. players such as yourself yeah. and... Uh, the Broken Hearts, uh, Olaf, you know, these people who are absolutely fantastic to watch, yeah. uh, mind-boggling. It's like watching an expert at snooker or darts or any yeah. great practitioner uh, practice that. My ambition would be to see you get the, the profile, yeah. the public profile, which all of you truly deserve. So, Kevin, thanks for talking to us. Maybe we'll come back in another year's time and we'll see yeah, how things are going. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I'll see we'll you later. See you in the final. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs>